Dodo, come here talking that bullshit, okay? What you talking about? Yeah. Sorry. What you talking about? Sorry, I was, I, was, I was having a like a early reaction to what we're going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, anyway, man. it's your boy. Lyrical your Miracles pod. over here. Where? <laughs> it's your favorite podcast, the Physics Study Group, hashtag TBSG. G, sorry. What's good, niggas? Wait, Did you wait. just call me a podcast? <laughs> mm, no. Ouch. No, no, seriously. Um, <laughs> no, nothing much going on here, guys, you know. Just yeah, you know, just doing an episode. Shit. Mo shit. Just doing an episode. Not yeah. too crazy. Okay, let's 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 get it. Let's get it. Going. Let's get it going. Let's on. Get who it. that over there? We'll make a day out of it. I forgot know. who I was for a second. I ain't gonna lie. I think I hit another level of litness. Mm. <laughs> is that even a word? <laughs> it is you just a, add you that use, to the TPSG dictionary. Where you along use, with another entry. You fuck aroundisms. It. You you <laughs> fuck aroundisms. Yes. Um, we'll bring, give you the definition later. But yeah, you used it <laughs> and people understood you, so it is a word. You know what's crazy it's to me? It's definitely effective communication. You know what's crazy to me? Like, they never said Shakespeare used slang. They just said he invented words. It's but then when white. niggas, but well, yeah, when niggas invent words, they say, oh, that's slang. That's improper English. Ah, message. It's anyway, in the dictionary now. who that is over there? So you know it. it's your boy, Swiss Army nigga. Swiss Army nigga. Swiss army um, nigga. All right, let's start this part. Swiss army um, nigga. Fuck right. yo. No. <laughs> you sound like a PBS TV show. Nigga. 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 Bang. Nigga. <laughs> Brought to you by the BBC. All right. Oh, this my is, God. They probably would give us a show. Like yeah. They, they, they are, you know... This they is cl- <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> we'll never finish. <laughs> they are cheeky enough to do. All right, this is Flakazu. Flakazu. I was about to say Flakazuku. This is Flak. <laughs> this is Flakazulu, aka Sir Black Style the Third, aka Pablo Escovich. And who that over there? Dramatic, <laughs> aka Skip Beardless, aka Black Galifianakis, aka. <laughs> No more AKAs. Mm. Stop Until the, next episode. For this episode, exactly. <laughs> you feel me, bro? Stop the violence. Stop I, the I, violence. I get yes. it. Speaking no of violence. AKAs. Speaking, Speaking of, violence. of violence. Can we transition? Yes. Speaking of violence. Well, now that you say it. But that's how... No, no, no. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Okay, this is going to be a, a, a Speaking creative of ass transition. Yeah. <laughs> that is what... That is the way I would describe... <laughs> This music nowadays is violence on my ears, hurting my ears. <laughs> yeah, doing things to them I don't want to oh, hear. Oh god, oh, man, oh. He, that was the biggest. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that was. He, <laughs> Yo, but that's a, reach, that's a rare miss I'm, though. I'm, that's a rare miss. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm surprised. <laughs> I don't feel like I missed. I, I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm it was su- just a foul ball. I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised when you pull pull something on that reach. But that was a. It was a foul ball on strike two. He still got another chance. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yes, yes. Jinx. Stop taking my shit. But, um, but yes. that was yours. Yeah. <laughs> you want to... <laughs> but yeah, we're talking about... <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> we're talking about hip hop the other day. Mm-hmm. And good old hippity hop. Good old hippity hop. Oh, God. And, say that again. You know... Before my ears bleed. You know... Blackity black black music, oh, as it's called sometimes. <laughs> like Dead Mike Black. Like CB4 Black. <laughs> I'm like, black, y'all. And I'm black, y'all. And I'm black and I'm black and I'm black. And I'm black, and I'm black. Are we seeing a correlation uh, with uh, that movie yeah. nowadays <laughs> yeah. in music? Yes. Yeah. But, um, you know, they're saying that, you know, what's unique with hip hop, um, they're saying it's a young man's game. Mm-hmm. You That's know? what it seems like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I have a rebuttal to that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Doesn't it always get to that point? It always mean? gets to the point. You don't think Jay Z Nazim kicked other niggas out, the niggas before them, kicked, like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's always at some point a young man's game. Yeah, but these I mean, niggas go get old. This gonna be young. You get what I'm saying? It, but then it's, it's like a cycle. But then why does it have to be that way? Because in other come. genres of music, you know what I'm saying? One, a lot of musicians don't break out until you know their later years. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you talk about rock bands and stuff like that, or even like, you know. You know, just different types of music all over the world, mm-hmm. you know. But, like, it's 
I guess I don't know why. Like, why is it so important in hip hop that it comes from, you know, the voice of the youth, or it has to be, or not even just the voice of the youth, or just it has to be a young I, from a young voice. I could definitely answer that. All right. So my opinion is that first of all, hip hop is a younger genre. It's a younger art it form, is. right? Yeah. It's young. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's been around what forty years now. Probably yeah. officially, mm-hmm. or at least if you look at the date of the first. You know, hip hop party or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, from Cool Herc, but so in general, hip hop is young. So yeah, it's and it's born out of the young and disenfranchised. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. In in New York, in the Bronx specifically, and um, from there, it's it, that's been the trend. You know, the idea of like if hip hop was built on the foundation of young cats doing it, you know, yeah, then or practicing it, then essentially that's gonna be the model of what you're supposed to be in hip hop. Mm-hmm. Uh, but over time, as hip hop gets older, you know, because hip hop's first iteration, you know, the first rap songs, the first, mm-hmm. you know, all of that, you know, it was still new. It was still the art form, you know, fine tuning itself yeah. through the interactions and the different people participating. Yeah. And so it, I think I a lot of people who consider the 90s a golden era might look at that as like the gold standard and this is where we're going to base our foundation mm-hmm. of what hip hop is from for the most part right late mm-hmm. 80s mm-hmm. you know to the early mid 90s and and, and, I, and a lot of the older older generation rejected it too exactly you know what i'm saying they were exactly. even tripping off of them scratching off the records. 90s shit yeah, yeah they were bugging mm. they were bugging all, when outcast came out come on man mm. like oh, yeah. and, and outcast even, even before that just like yeah. you know when when they started scratching records and stuff oh, like, like that, right, people, yeah. they people, messing up the records, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that was more disco people tripping about yeah. know, scratching. But like some of those people who were into disco, pro- I'm sure ended up transitioning into love and hip hop. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah, of course, most of them. I think um, so. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, the black people who like disco, not like the actual rich upper mm-hmm. crust who are into disco. Upper Ba-da-ba-da. crust. Yeah, uh, but but in general, uh, I guess the point I was trying to make was that like hip hop is finally grown up, and the p- the pioneers in hip hop have you know in ge- in general most of the very important ones have lasted the test of time with their music and their relevance, like you say Nas or Jay Z, um, or the relevance of Tupac and Biggie's music after mm-hmm. their death so many years ago. Yeah, um, I think at hip hop as a culture as a nation has had time to reflect on the effects of hip hop and what we've done. Mm. And I think that now you, now it's ready to accept a 444 album. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or it's ready to accept or even Nas with um I mean uh Life is Good. Life is Good was still a very mature, you know, yeah. album and it was after a big milestone and 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 you know what some would consider a tragedy of the divorce, you know. Mm. That is um, a tragedy. And <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, it really is a tra- divorce. Really is a tragedy, especially the, you know when you're really in love. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, so I, I think that hip hop has slowly been growing up, and it's time to accept it now. But unfortunately, you know, there's still a large masses of people who let the bullshit slide because of things like the record labels mm-hmm. and you know who pushed a certain product, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, well, no, no, of course, of course, of like, course. you can't argue facts. Facts is facts. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, there, those are those those examples are people who are kind of like, you know, they've established themselves and they've been in the in the game since they were young. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, do you think hip hop would embrace like you know somebody in their thirties, forties, just coming out, just coming out? See, they did Rick Ross. Hmm? They made well, you know, that wasn't the forefront of, you know. What what you was gonna say, dramatic? Cause I, I was I already talked a lot. <laughs> no, I was gonna say that um, in the same in the same sense that it's a young man's game. It's young. It's a young man's game all around. So you still have like you brought up Jay Z, Tupac, Biggie, da da da. Even though it's a young man game, there's people in this game that are like them. Mm-hmm. Like the, I'm gonna bring up Kendrick, of course, because mm-hmm. Kendrick he knows how to speak to this generation way better than Jay Z can. I'm not mm-hmm. saying he's a better rapper than him. They yeah. can speak to the generation, and he's pretty much sending the same message. Okay. But Kendrick can tra- Kendrick can speak to speak to them better. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That that's where I feel like the disconnect. And it, it's like one of those things that you know it's not your fault, Jay Z. Mm. You know what I'm saying. Like it's not your fault. These kids don't well, understand. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. But yeah, but Jay Z wasn't sending them messages when he was young, so he can't feel no way. Mm. Like 
Well, yeah, yeah, that's young true too, people yeah. identify. Uh, young people are very aware of the disconnect between mm-hmm. young and old. So, yeah. like, much more than anyone else. Yeah, uh, because their experience is short already. So, like, and the, the disconnect so, is, is so apparent now because it's like with the with how technology is moving. Mm-hmm. Because before, oh yeah, before <laughs> and we we talked about this before. <laughs> before people used to live the same way for generations. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Right. The way the way you grew up is the way your father grew up is the way his father grew up. That now, has changed in the last hundred yeah, years. Yeah, drastically. Drastically. Bruh. Now, now it's 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 so crazy to where you and your older sibling have a completely different experiences. Mm-hmm. That's how quickly if you're at least five years apart. Exactly. Or even three sometimes. Word, because imagine being <laughs> imagine being in high school during, you know, with with Instagram. <clears throat> With Snapchat, your experience is completely different. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that disconnect right there is is, is huge. And there was a boom in the last few years. Just to put it into context, mm-hmm. I graduated high school. I'm not gonna say the year, but say the year. I was in college for a 1972. long time. 1972. Mm-hmm. Back in 1972, in good old Miami Dade at Fort Lauderdale High School. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. For those of y'all who get what I'm saying, you will get it. If you don't, you don't. Um, <laughs> Basically, um, when when I was coming up, you know, YouTube wasn't oh, bought by boy. Google yet. Mm. You know, it was new, and there were other media and video websites out there that yeah. were just as popular as YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, Vimeo, and that was when a video was like, you know, a few seconds. If you found a minute video, it was like, whoa. <laughs> like yeah. videos a minute kids yeah. like and then you wait I might be exaggerating probably wait. like two minutes three and then minutes. you wait the 20 minutes for that minute mm-hmm. video to load exactly <laughs> for real exactly <laughs> like back back when all alright so to put it in perspective my school we had DSL but it was when DSL was like about to be on his you way out. You motherfuckers. Like, it was right to be on, about to be. Yeah, because you really what you say? Mean? You it wasn't 1992. I ain't going to high school yeah, in 1992. No, 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 no. We had DSL. We like, had DSL too. For the 99 <laughs> to 2000. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were, you were. <laughs> but um, yeah, and so to put it in perspective, that's, I think, I was in college for a little bit longer than most people, or as long as a lot of people are. In and this room, yeah. most of my closest friends had. Instagram mm. when they were in high school. Okay, I might be exaggerating, but they knew about Instagram or some of these other uh, things that came out. Like people I went to college with never had a MySpace. When yeah. did Instagram yeah. come out? Well, I don't because I would I remember being in college on MySpace. Yeah, you know, but I, but MySpace kind of went out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's a great that's a great indicator of. Uh, of the episode, yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> like, damn. So, <laughs> it's like, oh shit, yeah, we we kind of we kind of like we kind of went too far out, yeah, and we kind of got off the subject, but yeah, yes. definitely did. Hip hop, yes. let's Hip-hop bring being... it back. That was another terrible TPSG. Cut that Wild out. Wild ass tangent. No, you supposed to sing it, bro? No, we cut. Damn. We cut I wasn't shit. proud of that. Hurt we, my feelings. We keeps it real at the, the physics at study the physics group. study group, man. But yeah, so, but yeah. Uh, anyway, this is raw conversation. <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, do you feel like if if hip hop was more accepting of like older crowd that you know, because we we talk about the foolishness that happens in hip hop, mm. and I feel like, but that's I, some young shit. Yeah, exactly. I feel like a lot of it is because. You know, a lot of these guys coming in are like 18, 19, and they're getting all this money and they're, they're, they're not approaching it in, you know, in the same way that, you know, maybe they would if they were like 25, 26, or even in their 30s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they definitely, um, because with most, hip, like, when, hip, you hip. Think, when you think of most professions, like other than athletes and, and, and hip hop artists, like most, like if you're like in business or any other way, most people don't start, you know, in terms of like success, kind of like mm-hmm. blossoming until like their thirties, maybe their forties, yeah, and later in life. So it's like when they get it, they they approach it with a maturity, right? You know well, I mean? and and also, and you know, if you look at things like hip hop or you know music deals, you know, uh, 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 music uh, business, uh. you look at <laughs> contracts to where. 
the general demographic of people who participate in this form of entertainment are young. Mm-hmm. Um, they get a lot of money at one time with no financial advice. None. Also, and that's part of it because like hip hop was like, and hip hop didn't start out deep. You know, it was always I want to rock the party, I want to mm-hmm. feel good. Hip hop was always about the feel because it was still an art form and an escape, and it's emotionally um, charged and. When niggas started, you know, rapping and everything, and then they realized there was, you know, revenue, you know, money that could be made in what they were doing, and then when record companies started giving them big checks, mm. you know, I mean, you know, a nigga get a hundred thousand dollar check when he from the projects, mm. yeah, in, like in nineteen off rip. in nineteen ninety one or nineteen eighty nine, yeah, that's a hundred thousand dollar budget to do your album and you you know a nigga that can make beats for you and you could pay him you know like it's yeah bro you you went wild yeah. <laughs> right you yeah. go use and, the rest of that and you bricks. flip that shit oh yeah uh-huh. like nigga, i'm sure niggas used to do that hell yeah but, man. Um, i'm sure rappers used to do that but um at the so when you think about it and when you actually break it down to its core and you think about it in, in the actual context yeah like it stays a young man's game because the people, the you know, the voices of it mm-hmm. are the ones that are being given this money and able to you know do things without much mentorship, mm-hmm. you know, uh, coming with it. So, you know, that's part of it. I don't say I don't think there's a problem with that. Mm-hmm. Um, in the sense of you know, it's okay to be young and start you know get a check and be able to provide for your family because right. most people who do end up getting that check do provide for their family in some way. Um, when they get that check, but Another point was um, the the reach is getting, you mm. know what I'm saying? Because nowadays, if you have a pulse, mm. you have a smartphone in your hands. It's unfortunate, yeah. but it's true. Yeah. <laughs> like, you from as pulse. young as one or two years old to as old as, I don't know, 80, 90 years old, everyone is using a smartphone. Yeah. And everyone is able to see everything now. And that's how a lot of these young rappers are... Um, are blown up because of social media and shit like that. Mm-hmm. They're getting their name out and the good somehow. use of it. Yeah, yeah, they're making a they real good use, use of it because they're reaching everybody. They know yeah. how to use and it. And you know, yeah. um, believe it or not, uh, I, I believe no, it's, it's not even believe it or not. It makes sense. Kids, you know, use phones way more than adults. Like, mm. I think, if I'm not mistaken, like it's of like course. a big difference. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Of course. And that's who that's who drives your industry. That's why it's all on YouTube, YouTube, because you can access YouTube on your phone, you can access Spotify, Apple Music, mm-hmm. everything on your phone. your phone. So they just spread it everywhere. They know people are gonna be looking at it all the time. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? That's a huge and difference. They, I said it. I think I said it one podcast like how different hip hop would be if social media came out of like 1990 or some shit. Oh. Or if we had the same technology now, we had that would be you know, weird. It would be. I guarantee Wu Tang would have their own city by now, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they really, they would, really would bro. have a borough to themselves in New York. Or, nah, they would probably have. <laughs> but then they'll uh, also have, not to themselves, no, but like they would have they'll like open like up a, a community. commune in China, dog. Like, oh they yeah, would probably definitely. have their own republic. What they, <laughs> they would have too is other competition. Yes, there would be other niggas who would be talking about other than Wu Tang because I'm no. pretty sure there's there was, there was you know people. Speak. True, Wu-Tang but that true talent a, always shines through. Wu Tang is a force, nigga. Mm-hmm. Like. If Wu Tang comes, you don't want no problem with Wu Tang. Wu Tang no, ain't nothing to, to fuck with. He don't like. Know. I don't think you understand no, that ghost. That 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 song was a message. It wasn't a um. I don't like think a. You know, no, it, it was a, it, like, it was a Wu-Tang real life play? message. Like Ghostface yeah. Killer will fucking grab your gun out your hand and slap you with it Man, and laugh. What I'm, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that other record companies told no, what I'm their saying, artists not to mention Wu Tang. What, what, what I'm <laughs> like, don't what, mention their name. What I'm saying is that if if they if everyone had this accessibility, because that's what's mm-hmm. happening now. Yeah, there's a lot of other competition that yeah. you have to deal with because people can just put their music out there, mm-hmm. and people who normally wouldn't get a shine are getting a shine, which is a good and bad thing in some in some well it depends on how you well I, I you still take, I still feel like it comes down to talent still because, you still gotta take something into account because I feel like alright because here's my thing I feel like when you have when you have people like what's that dude um with the sixty nines all of tattooed Takashi to yeah to, oh Takashi to yes. me like I never listened to him before me neither me neither but he. But he's huge, apparently. Yeah, nah, he's big. Yeah. Like, you know, every... That's Illuminati's all pet. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you laughing. No, but what's crazy... So he a plant? What is, what is crazy is like, all right, somebody I've never... 
And when you look at the crowd, it's just like, I feel like what with the streaming stuff too, because there's mm-hmm. so many people outside of the culture that also mm-hmm. enjoy hip hop. Yeah, they also because they have access to it now. That's they, the point I was making. Yeah. No, they also sway the culture as well because, because they don't know its origin. Yeah, so they so so a Takashi sixty nine or whatever the fuck can can get can <laughs> can get a get, get a get a bunch of spins off some W's in the suburbs. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and, and become a face of hip hop, even though like. He's not really for the wrong reasons. For the wrong reasons, like, yeah. like to me, it's all he's really gimmicky and like I don't know, like Re- like he's gotten to the point where like gimmicky is not a word for him. What does he's he do? Just, I don't I don't follow him. That's why I'm not saying has, too much. He, but I see him pop up. I don't even want to explain it. But like he looks, things, like so. looks like a cartoon character. Yeah, he looks. I see Real how he looks, he looks with looks the like hair and the color. And he, he looks wild. And tattoos. And he does and wild shit. This is what Aaron Magruder warned us about. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it's been prophesied and, and with Boondocks. And there's another one um that kind of looks like him with red dreads, but like apparently Lil, both of them are Lil beef. Pump. Lil Pump. I Gucci Gang. Pro- Lil about Pump beef with oh, yeah. Takashi. Yeah. Lil, Lil Pump beefing? from from Miami though. Yeah. So yeah, he a little re- no, yeah. you stop. Not <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> nah, look, I haven't listened to enough <laughs> of Lil Pump's music, so I ain't gonna say shit. But he sound ridiculous to me. Yo, if <laughs> I saw a video. And this is just very, uh, just very. I like his energy though. <laughs> no, his energy even sucks. <laughs> um, somebody edited the Gucci Game video mm-hmm. with no repeating words. Oh, uh, it was like, a and it was seconds. forty seconds long. Yeah, well, it's a short. Cut song. down it's from a, two minutes, two minutes, two thirty seconds to forty seconds. seconds with no repeating words. I mean, he said forty. There's, but there's clearly no context. That song, the beat takes the beat rides. No, it's he just always rides though. The beat. Speaking and when of I said I like his energy, I want to be clear. It's when I watch his Instagram videos. He remind me of them, them niggas I went to school with that I had a lot of fun with. Like, like just one of the wild chicos. That, yeah, that, that's yeah, but why would I said I like his energy. Would you give them money to make an album? I wouldn't. Okay, you make up my fucking. I point. wouldn't. Like you, anyway. my dog, and I know you loyal, and I know when shit but go down. Can't make no we there, music. but I'll rap. <laughs> you stick to the wild shit. <laughs> Yo, but um, oh shit! Oh, you made me lose my train. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I mean, check it back. Check it oh, back. that's what I was gonna say. Speaking of hip hop being a young man's game, not only with rappers, with with uh, with producers, mm-hmm. Metro Boomin is saving hip hop right now. He kind of is. I'm gonna look mm-hmm. into the at least the culture of it. The culture. Metro yeah. booming, booming. Metro Boomin is saving hip hop. <laughs> Mainstream uh-huh. hip hop, whatever you hip, his beats are. He hasn't made one lane beat Main, yet. Mainstream hip hop. Right, that, that's the I'm, way. I'm gonna that's say the mainstream. proper term. Mainstream. I'm gonna say hip-hop. mainstream. I feel like now the real artists are behind, like behind the screen. It's the producers. And then, but then yeah, when you look definitely. at, and but when you look, because even when you look at the rappers who you consider like really, you know, thoughtful and and and, mm-hmm. and artistic, they produce as well. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm and there's a lot of great producers out there that you yeah. just didn't know produce a bunch of shit you liked. Yeah. yeah, like there's a lot of talented guys out there, and um, yeah. you know, uh, unfortunately, like I mean, Metro Boomin still like I've heard a lot of Metro Boomin beats that just sound plain to me. They're not whack, but like I don't I don't care for it. No, like, I hear a no, lot of that. That's so, all I want to hear. But he whack. has he does he but he <laughs> definitely puts out quantity, but and major and he. M- 99% of the time is quality. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, he's saving beat. them, though. These niggas can't rap worked, without these good beats. Though. But he's passionate. Where a lot he, of, he loves what he, he does. And a lot of times, well. like it's it'll be like the simple beats that mm-hmm. knock, dog. That's like, yeah. you know, that, yeah. that gives uh, the artist like the free reign. Like, all right. You know what's a good that. example of that? Bitch, you guessed it. Oh, yeah. You, ever, you know that beat? Do, 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 do. That is a yeah. That beat is simple as hell, but goes hard. Bitch, you do. You was motherfucking right. But it's kind of beats like that is the reason why beats like that can exist. If you get what I'm saying, yeah. Like, did they really need to come in? I sound like an elitist. Hey, but um, um, I'm, I'm. Damn, what's wrong with me? Sorry. What is wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I'm I just wanted not to the argue. first one to say this. I just wanted to argue but that point. Every era does have its trash. Yeah. yeah. You oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? And even though I, I think I know this song verbatim, 
Um, Dawes effects, they want effects. Yeah. Uh-huh. In hindsight, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> That yeah. song is incredible, but though. Effects was but if like listen, the most he, popular hip hop rap artist. Yeah, for several years, this nigga was selling out but, shows. Bump stickity, bump stickity, he went, bump, he went platinum, bump. right? Like a I few like times, him, yeah. though. But then he came out with some hip hop shit, and he said, "Oh," and, and you were more upset, like, "Oh, you can spit." That's it. why did you? You know what I'm saying? Why are you making this bullshit? You but can I'm, actually But a lot, of thing, a lot of things happened during that time. Dude. Wasn't he part of Death Squad or whatever? Probably. I'm not was sure. It? I'm not absolutely sure. I think he was with that crew. And, like a lot of things And he had that track with Ice Cube. Time. I didn't even know. That's what Common dissed them for. But anyway. Oh. But anyway. <laughs> if you think about it from this standpoint, right? Back in the day, niggas had to get... The label had to allow it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you had to get through the door. So you were already... For the most part, fine tuned. Yeah. Most are most rappers back then. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So you already perfected your craft. These kids blow up when they just started rapping, you know, a few months ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Liter- Lil Uzi Vert was rapping for like a year or two when he blew up. Yeah. Yeah. And, and his old music sounds completely he, different. Yeah, no, he was there was some yo, one of his biggest songs, he was rapping off beat at points. So I and so like and I and I'm not I'm not complaining because I actually I actually I hate this. Oh man, I don't hate to say this, but I actually kind of like Uzi Vert, man. Like I enjoy some of his music. Do you and know the Do you know the conspiracy theory about him? Nah, I don't. I mean, I just know that he, like he just loves that inverted cross shit, and it's like, well, the, um, there's something behind that. It sounds crazy, but it, it's kind of funny. Hear it. No, they said like Lil Uzi Vert. Oh yeah, it's another. It's like a yeah. variation of Lucifer. It's a variation like Lucifer. Yeah. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, um, I ain't they, listening to him no more. Daylight, um, no, daylight, like, daylight's a battle rapper. Yeah, daylight. And he yeah. um he had a, like a minute long video on his Instagram about it, but it made sense. But he's a goofball, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, it made he, sense. Yeah, but like he's a you, crazy goofball. If you, no, no, no. He's hilarious. Does some wild. If, shit. if you look at like Lil Uzi Vert's like videos of his shows, like there'll be like three like inverted crosses on stage, big as fuck. Like, oh really? Always, yeah, he always has like a chain with it. I know he has a chain with it. Yeah, yeah he like. Earrings, like he does that shit a lot. Oh, they invited. It was so weird to see him at the Grammys. I mean, mm. he was nominated. I'm not gonna take that from him. Congratulations, little nigga. Mm. But it was just <laughs> weird to see him there. Right. You know what I'm saying? Cause and not because how he was dressed. Cause I've seen some niggas dressed crazy. Oh yeah. But always, it was just different. Like this is who's representing me at the at the Grammys. Yeah. I think the <laughs> shoulder thing was always kind of. I can't even do it. It's weak. Like I'm not yeah. weak. I like I look at it and I don't I don't think it's anything. I think it's like a kid on drugs that did something he thought was funny, but like in actuality everybody else around you is sober. Mm. But and all the other kids Ooh, who were I on drugs it way, yeah. thought it was cool too. So he starts doing it. Like that's just the way I look. I might be over analyzing, but like when no, I remember when I was seeing him on the red carpet that's doing that shit and he's like moving all slow and I'm like and I be high when I'm watching this, and I'm like, man, he looks weird. Like, and it's not not that he looks any other kind of way. He just looks like he doesn't know what he's doing. He just did something and ran with it to me. Yeah, but like, but other uh, you know, aside from that, I actually enjoy his music though. <laughs> I ain't gonna. Lie I will to enjoy you. a couple songs. It probably literally two, but um, I have about five. Another one, um, mm-hmm. Lil Yachty. Oh, I don't like now. No, no. The thing with him, I'm not mad at Lil Yachty. I'm not me mad either. at him at all. He is trash. I acknowledge that. Hmm. But I'm not mad at him. You know why? Because he's young and I really feel like he's being taken advantage of. He was hip hop scapegoat. Mm. Yeah. They they you wanted know someone you can to tell blame all the bad shit on. You can and tell he doesn't give a fuck about yeah, yeah. this. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Joe Budden, albeit he was uh pretty aggressive. <laughs> he was but trying to warn But that's how he is with everyone. Yeah, that's how he is with everybody. And he was upset that Yachty wasn't taking heed. Yachty's like, chill, I'm going to be fine. Like He's like, no. You're he's basically saying you're not going to be fine. Mm-hmm. They're going to fuck you over. It's going to yeah. happen. And then they try to play Joe Budden. And Joe, they try like, to play Joe like, Budden as an crazy angry nigga. Mm-hmm. And then if you say, all right, watch what happened. Oh, you're a hater. This is a vicious cycle. <laughs> Word. But, but then, anyway, yeah. But then looking back, you know, hey. It happens. You'll see what happens. happens. You know, all we can do is see what happens. I yeah. mean. Who knows? And- Nas might drop. Another five mic album next year or this year. Who knows? Right. But you know I, I don't I'm, damn audience members. <laughs> but I'm I'm he said, Oh damn. Right. I'm I'm looking at my I'm looking at my sundial and 
What year is it, nigga? It's about an episode. It's, we oh, definitely shit. talked right through the new year. Yeah. That was a long oh, shit. episode. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> who that is? <laughs> you know, it's your boy, Black. Yo, we didn't even wrap it up, though. Yo, yeah, yeah. We didn't wrap it up. Look, look, look. look. The, the thought to wrap it up with is that, yeah, hip-hop is a young man's sport, but when it comes down to mainstream. it, hip-hop is growing up, too. Yeah. Yes, it so, is. it also has to grow with its participants. So... Mm. We got to find new ways to express ourselves within the same vein of what hip hop is. Mm. You know, keep the energy going. And uh, you know, there were there were albums before 444. So let's not yeah. look yeah. at oh, Jay Z like oh, yeah. King. Yeah. I mean, like Scarface I mean, been dropping yeah. intellectual, thought provoking, yep. real hood shit. Killer so let's Mike. not act like. But then you guys, exactly men- so. you guys mentioned that you know, you know, two chains and bust till his thirties. You know, I think Rick, Rick Ross, Ross was like, was like thirty three when he. But first they're they're playing the, the young album. man's game though. Yeah. You don't think so? Oh, oh, definitely. Yeah, but but um, but I think because um, Rick Ross style of rap came, but let's not go. Back yeah, into we're gonna it, go back into. <laughs> let's not but, go back into. No, it. Two, next two cha- Yeah, they definitely didn't. Um, you know, they, they play in the young man's game, but there are some artists that stayed in their lane, still got their money, exactly. and had their fan base. You just didn't see it on the radio. So, young, last word, great and, example, and, Juicy J. And when you, Tech exactly, Nine and them people, but when uh, Tech Nine. Mm-hmm. Best example, probably. Yeah. Because that nigga got money. Right? <laughs> it's his. And you, and you probably never heard of him, people listening. Word. So, Shout out Kansas. Word. So when it, when it it's com- either you've never heard of Tech 9 or that nigga is tattooed on your chest. There's no... <laughs> there's one of them. <laughs> there's no... There's, Talk about... No, yo, stark difference. No, there's no in between. Uh, tech yo, nine, Tech 9 is intense, man. Yo, Tech yeah. 9 fan, And he's amazing. Yo, hey, there's... This, I this dare you to spit. talk some shit about Tech 9 and his ra- And his skill. This nigga rap, rap circles around you. Mm, so bro. when it comes down to it, man, I forgot what I was gonna say. And but that's a, that's a but hip hop is hip hop, man. And like we gotta we gotta roll with the punches. Word. So roll Bomb. with the punches, nigga. Bomb. Keep it alive. Bomb. <laughs> so so it's your boy, Black Dynamite, aka Swiss Army nigga. And you know who it is to my right. This is Flocka Zulu, aka Sir Black Stallion the Third, aka Pablo Escovicha. And it's your boy, Jordan Maddox, a.k.a. Skip Bearless, a.k.a. Black Galifianakis, a.k.a. Uh, I had another one, dog. I'm mad I forgot it. Uh, I'll come. So. <laughs> so I'll see y'all next episode. Peace. <laughs>